it's Friday and you know what that means. It's time for another double feature Friday. And as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I'm kind of cheating this week because I'm talking about one film, but it was released in two parts in 1973 on German television. And that film is World on a Wire. This is the first film I've seen by director Fassbender, uh, Rainier Werner Fassbender. He was a German director who was born right after World War II. He had a prolific career. He's gotten a lot of acclaim. Like I said, this is the first film I've seen of his and I definitely need to check out more of his films because, spoiler alert, I loved this film. It is probably one of my favorites that I've seen at least in the recent past, if not ever. Fassbender directed more, around 40 films or even maybe more than that. And he unfortunately died at the young age of 37 due to a drug overdose, which is really unfortunate. This is the only science fiction film that he directed. And I think that is what I really liked about, I, for some reason, I don't watch a lot of science fiction. It's something that I never think I'm gonna enjoy. And the majority of the time when I watch it, I do end up loving it. World on a Wire came out in 1973 on German television. Like I said, it was, a, it was divided into two parts. Each part is around an hour and 45 minutes long, so it's a lengthy film. Since it was released on television, I think it wasn't really widely distributed. So not a lot of people saw it until about 10 years ago when it got a physical media release, it got a, a release at a film festival. Now you can find it on the Criterion channel and obviously Criterion also released it on physical media. It does feel like this, I never heard of this film before. I don't think it's talked about a lot and I still think it's not widely known. I think Criterion sometimes is uh, kind of a niche. It seems like Criterion is more geared to like film buff type people and I don't think it's maybe always the most accessible for everybody. But I have to say if you have the opportunity to check this film out, I 100% recommend it. It is one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. It is sort of like well, sort of. It is a precursor to films like The Matrix, and I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the Wachowskis had seen this film and that inspired The Matrix because it has a lot of similarities. It is a film about a simulation, and the lead character is someone involved in the creation of the sim simulation, and he sort of starts to devolve into this madness that maybe the world that he's living in is also a simulation and there's like a next level above it and he sort of comes to this realization that he's just a character in this not real world and it starts to drive him mad and a lot of things start happening around him where people keep start disappearing he actually goes into the simulation because he's sort of an engineer and he works for the company who created this simulation world he goes into the simulation to talk to one of the characters there and that person tips him off to the fact that yes you're in a simulation right now because you came to visit me but your world that you think is a real world is also a simulation and i mean i think he already had his suspicions that something like that was going on he then begins this pursuit of the truth and it drives him to madness and i don't want to give too much away i don't think it's a film that will be spoiled. Yeah, it sort of watches his descent into madness, like in his pursuit of the truth. The thing that I really liked about this film is it also is sort of more like a noir. I love the noir vibes. I love the way this film was photographed and shot it is possibly one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. It looks like every shot was 100% planned out there are no mistakes. There are no happy accidents, it feels like. I think everything was so intentional and planned. I mean, personally, I love that type of film where you can really see, like it might have been storyboarded to death, maybe not, but that's sort of like the impression that I get from this film. So beautiful, so simple. I think it was shot on a fairly small budget. That's just my guess based on how it looks 
but they managed to make it look so futuristic at the same time through the set design, through the camera shots, the angles, and a lot of it is showing. Uh, so the camera will pan around like the characters in a scene and it'll stop on their reflection. So all of a sudden you're seeing this conversation happening, but only through their faces in reflections of different um, surfaces. It gives it this really weird eerie feeling. And I think that in conjunction with the actors that Fassbender found for this film, they have this robotic quality to them that it obviously plays into like this madness. And even you start questioning who's like an NPC or who's a real person. Are we in a simulation here? I just felt really like there's no special effects in this film. Everything is done with practical effects. There's some action sequences, some different things, but everything is done in a way that you could, I feel like any one could have shot this film. Maybe not as beautifully, but it feels very accessible in that way. The set design is so great. This one is 50 years old and it still manages to feel kind of modern and maybe futuristic even for me watching it today in 2022 which I think that's you know a real feat. I don't think that's an easy thing to do. I think Fassbender had a great vision when he shot this film and it's really wonderful. It is based on a novel. I I'm not sure the title of the novel, but there was another film that came out in I think the 90s or 2000s called The 13th Floor and it's based on the same novel. I briefly considered doing that as the second film for this double feature, but I watched the trailer and to be honest, I was so turned off. I think that era of filmmaking is just never appealing to me. I don't know, maybe it's a really good film, but I just felt like I don't know if I'd be able to say many good things about it in comparison to World on a Wire because World on a Wire is pretty much almost a perfect film. Like as close as you're gonna get of the films that I've seen. If you haven't seen this film, I totally recommend that you check it out. Um, especially, I just watched the new Matrix film, uh, Matrix Resurrections. And this, watching this kind of reminded me how good film can be when you just sort of bring it down to like the most simple level and you just have really good cinematography and really good sets and really good acting and writing. Maybe it's just the source material that was great, but I, I just think like now we watch all the, everyone wants to see that blockbuster type film and you know, there's such a huge, uh, prevalence of superhero type films and films with lots of effects and every time it has to feel like it's over the top and really it, those things don't necessarily make a great film. I think, it, you know, you can have sort of the most simple thing and maybe even a very little budget or very little bit of money to throw at it and you could still make something that's so wonderful and beautiful to look at and just I couldn't stop thinking about this movie for the last I think I've watched it two weeks ago now and honestly I am still in love with it and I can't like it stuck with me. I say check it out if you have the opportunity to obviously it is a time commitment it's almost four hours long but even on Criterion, it's divided up into part one and part two. So it's more digestible that way. But I would like to sometime soon watch it all the way through the full three and a half hours because I would like to see what that feels like. I think it might not even affect my you know, opinion of it, but it might make me like it more. And also I felt like when I saw this movie, it felt like one of those comfort movies to me. This feels like a film that I could put on on a sick day or something and just like get into and watch it and I would feel cozy and comfort comforted. And I think that is just a nice thing to find. I don't often have that experience when I watch a film of having that feeling of like, oh, I could even just fall asleep and have this on. and. I'd be totally fine with that because I feel like this is the world I want to live in and I just really like it. Yeah, so I think that's it for me. I, I'm sure I could talk about this movie for a lot 
longer, but you know, I don't want this video to go on for too long. If you've seen any Fast Fender films that you thought were good, please comment below. It's always nice to have people's recommendations and I love to hear your feedback. Have you seen World on a Wire? What did you think of it? Did you like it as much as I do? Yeah, and I think that's it for me for this week. Bye for now.